Connor, when you mentioned the fan fiction, I thought you were going to say something else, which I've been exploding about and needing to talk about. Matthew. I have right. mentioned, in, I recently, on a podcast an episode or two ago, I have written one fan fiction in my life. I have read millions infinite. and millions infinite. and infinite of pages longer than Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Curtin Blaine from Glee. Blaine having an ankle monitor. No, yes. <laughs> I've read count. I've written one. And I the one I wrote was about Dr. Spencer Reed from Criminal Minds, played by Matthew K. Goobler, who was like one of my all time celebrity crushes. And we will not ever be in a place where I will read that fan fiction to you or you will find it. But I will give you the basic summary of the fan fiction. The main character was not my name, but of course I am. I identified with her. Y slash N. Y slash It wasn't a Y slash N. I did name her. Yeah, but it was based on. Based Lady on. So basically, the loose plot is that he was my therapist. Ooh. After I went through something really traumatic. Jesus. Taboo. <laughs> and then Seriously. we fell in love yeah. because he really got that's to a, know me. That's going to go ahead and go down in the HIPAA book. That's a violation. <laughs> fell in love. His license is stripped. <laughs> and then we, were not, not, we were not able to see each other anymore on a professional level due to falling in love with each other in that setting. So we stopped seeing each other. Didn't see each other for five years. Fast forward for five years. We're both in the FBI. <laughs> Trying to navigate how to be co-workers on the same murder case while being in love. Okay, that's the basic premise of the fan fiction. How don't, old were you don't, when you wrote this? How old? Uh, 19. 27. <laughs> 35. Too old. I actually Correct. haven't even written it yet. And and that, and I don't, it's not even something that I want to talk about openly because it, it's like not funny. Like no, I was but not, it is, but there it, was no humor behind that fan fiction. There was just no. me being alone. And I did write it, I co. I had a co-author, I wrote it with my friend over FaceTime. We're talking about, okay, what would Dr. Spencer Reed do in this situation? Anyway, and I, I, that's how much, like I need you guys to understand the extent of how much I was in love with this man. Yeah. And I've also developed a three-tiered kind of level of having a celebrity crush that I think will help you also understand how much I, I care about. Yeah, Matthew I'd Gugler. like to know about this tier system. Sure, and I hope I got it right because I was thinking about it in the shower and I was like, this is so genius. Like, it's got, someone's going to write about it in the textbook, mm -hmm. but I fear I'm not going to be able to translate it. So please bear with me. There's three tiers to this approach. Tier number three, which is the least intense tier of having a celebrity crush, is someone you, and I'm thinking mostly about actors and even singers when I think about this, but there's right. tons of other celebrities. Tier three is your, when you consume their content. So when you're watching a movie or something with them or watching them perform, you're in love with them, but just kind of while you're consuming the content. It As you're in love with the character you're that they're playing? No, you you love them and you think they're hot and you'll maybe even do a little Wikipedia deep dive mm. while consuming the content, but it kind of stops there. You don't think about them too much after consuming yeah. the content. That's tier three. And for me, that's kind of like a Sebastian Stan, Jacob Elordi, like mm. you're watching, they're gorgeous. You'll Google, you'll Wikipedia, where are they from? How old are they? What's their I'd height? Like are they married? More, but it stops at a certain point. Cool. And you're right. And that's just like, that's, that's, that's like the, lo the lowest tier of celebrity so crush. We moved to tier two so where. Tier two is a step further where you are consuming their content. You're in love with them. You need to consume more. Yes. Okay. Fan edit. Fan edits. You're watching all of their late night interviews. You're on a deep YouTube spiral. You're entering Reddit. You're on the dark web. Yes. You're thinking about them more. I can't even you imagine know, how. I don't think you've ever passed no, tier three. You'll never I, I, no, I mean, I can't even imagine getting to tier two. I can't imagine how it gets more intense than yeah, going let, to the dark let me, web. Let me explain oh, it to listen. you. And even in tier two, I would say tier two, you could consume fan fiction. You might not. Well, then what the fuck not, is tier one? Tier one is, this is where Stalking. I. Th no. <laughs> this is. Tier one, you reserve for a f like a select few people. It is the most intimate level of celebrity crush where it's like the thought that you will not spend your life with this person, it is landing you almost, almost in a psych ward. It is scary. And that is how I felt about Matthew. Matthew, I'm consuming content left and right. I'm writing fan fiction. I thought about him. At, like when you wake up, when, when you, you go it, to bed, he is all consuming. You know everything about him. Maladaptive, maladaptive daydreaming. daydreaming at its finest. And what is that? that? You've fully disassociated, and in your, I'm, people are in the comments are going to be like, she, like, what's it called when you like call, like the a uh, citizen's pink, arrest. Yeah, it's like I'm but, about to citizen, make my move. But over. I, Dude, I'm just I'm trying. Step right over Britain. I am just. I have just created Book this three-tiered approach just so you can understand okay. how much. I was obsessed with Matthew Ray Goobler. Still am, not tier one necessarily, but was. Because right. you can only tier one with one person at a time. That's a hot take as well. That you can tier one with one mine, person at a time? Mine back up 
uh to each other Mm -hmm. like i'll literally uh, the thought exactly what you're describing the thought of like i will never find another person that i'm this attracted to terrifying and then six weeks later you have someone mgg who is your tier one do you have a tier one of course i do i've got harry styles tattooed on my body so you think harry styles it makes you sick to your stomach every day when you go to bed but no here's the thing and here's different because um it's not a crush for me. It's right, more that is like something I don't know if I understand. Harry Styles to me is more like he's my idol. Right. Which is You don't right wanna you don't know if you wanna be him or be in him? No, it's you more, don't it's even want to be in him. No, it's just like I the thought of being in a room with him makes me sick to my stomach. Yes. I can never meet him because I love mm. him so much. And then I had well, felt that way about Matthew. Yes. And guess what? It happened. And you made it out on the other side. Well, that's where we're going. I met Matthew. So wait, I want to. I, I met Matthew I, two nights ago. I want to rewind a little bit because the way that it happened is an act of God. Yeah, I don't even know this story. I so, am scared because I, I had just, well, like, I haven't talked about him until recently. One, he was the voice of Simon and Alvin and the Chipmunks. I've been talking about Alvin and the Chipmunks on stop. Yeah, I've been talking about Alvin and the Chipmunks on stop. Two, I brought up the fan fiction recently, which I had never talked about because I've been too embarrassed. I read it to Matt King. And you manifested it in that moment. A, like a month ago. And I was like, I will never read this to anyone again. I've never read this to someone. For whatever reason, I feel safe reading this fan fiction to you, Matt King. I have been talking about it recently. And then tuna, I don't, you take it away. I I have to, I just have to give background on this because it is absurd, like how it happened. So we get invited to this premiere. Like I don't get invited to things like that, like for good reason. This premiere is for Lost City. It's just came out, the the Channing Tatum and uh, Sandra Bullock movie. Um, I didn't know like Daniel Radcliffe and Brad Pitt and all of, and Oscar from The Uh, Office. It's one of those movies. It's like a star studded. Bo and Yang. I mean, like we get invited. I have nothing to wear to a carpet. So I go shopping, I get pants. I get home, try them on. They're like a little bit too big and you can't wear a belt to a red carpet. Mm-hmm. You just have to be a Harry Styles guy and like tuck your shirt in and call it a day. And my pants were falling off. So I call Brooke. Doesn't answer. I call Patricia, our friend. I was like, you need to bring me a safety pin, please. And some Tums because something's happening. Because I knew she had a huge like basically trough of Tums in her kitchen because I eat them every time I, we are going to a pregame. Ooh, candy. <laughs> it's literally chalk. Like, I'm, just, I'm just like <laughs> eating chalk at pregame. She brings me the safety pin. We're on the red carpet. She hands me safety pin and then... Brooke, I start to take pictures of Brooke, and she's like, Matthew Greg Gubik, and like starts to. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I can't Matt, Matt had texted me. Matt yeah. wasn't there yet. Matt had texted me, Matthew Greg Gubik's here, and I responded. I was like, "You're fucking with me," because I had just read him that fan fiction, and he was the one person I had read that fan. You right. thought he was? He was? Oh, I thought he was piss out absolutely with you, taking a piss out of me. Yeah. yeah. Brooke is grabbing me like Connor, Matthew Greg Gubik. I'm like, I don't who is this? I, I know his face, and I know I, his I name. know his face too. I don't know hard, what he's been in. It's hard to. He's he like, is Doctor Spencer, Spencer Reed in Criminal Minds, as yeah. well as Simon and Avin and the Chipmunks. He's in tons of other. Well, Brooke extends to me that like I'm obsessed with him and I can see it in her face because she is shaking and we're on the carpet and there's like Sandra Bullock's in front of us. I'm having an uh, <laughs> She's uh, having an a conniption. A spasm. And I'm like, how am I going to get Brooke over to him in like a natural way? And I see that his button has fallen off his his blazer. And I'm like, guess who has an extra safety pin? This guy. And a, to pocket full of t- <laughs> and a pocket full of tones. I go, uh, hey, Matthew, like I have a safety pin. Do you want me to like get your button on and he's like dude you just saved my life like and we're talking and he's like you don't know like that you just like i couldn't have gone out there on the carpet like the take my picture the whole world. and i'm yeah, like oh actually. of course of course i need you to meet my friend brock no that isn't you didn't get that oh no you, you because she, i'm she, looking she at screamed. connor and i am so sorry i want to apologize in advance i had the worst i was not judging you favorably in that moment i thought <laughs> i love you to goddamn death but connor does have some What's the word? Ethical social climbing. Ethical social clout chasing climbing tendencies. I'm I a networker. He's a networker. It's his business. Famously, what can he say? Famously. I thought at this point I'm seeing red. I'm in a blind rage. I thought Connor was making a video w- with Matthew Which and was not, not me. was and was not going to introduce me because there have been times in the past. No offense, Connor. Love you to goddamn death. Where Connor has b- talked to people that I really want to meet. No, no introduction. I would go as far as to say gatekeeping girl boss will not let me near them. <laughs> well, I'm also I I'm also proud. meeting these people for the first right. time. And I but that's where immediately that's where my head went is he is not going to introduce me. He is making a video. I didn't know what they were doing. They, he I didn't know about the safety pin. He's touching Matt. He's like all over Matthew. And I'm going, Connor, Connor, no, no, Connor. no, 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 no. You're going. Connor <laughs> and I can hear you. And there's a we're on we're on a red well, it was green, but it was a red carpet event. There's <laughs> there's fans yelling, Sandra, Matthew, and Brooks going, Connor! <laughs> and, but from the red carpet, not from the audience. And I'm like, I'm fucking working my thing right now. I'm doing my thing. And then I'm finally like, oh, Brooke, 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 come over here, like, meet Matthew. And then it just... Uh, and then it, I blacked out. I think I you blacked, blacked out, but I did... 
I did walk away because you guys were having a moment, but I did get a bunch on. I, I took a bunch of I we was have, firing off. We photos. have videos of me and Matthew that we can insert and post, but I'm, I feel she, like she's I watched hands them on her knees. Like <gasps> I watched the videos back and I, 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 I thought I was being a little shy. Like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm such a big fan. Screaming. I love you. It's so scary. Like, I'm watching back and I'm like, he wants me dead. Gripping like, on to his fucking... Ugh. And then he's yelling. He's telling Connor, you saved me. I had no idea about the safety pin. He's telling Connor, you saved me. I go, you saved me, Matthew. <laughs> Wait, is that is that on video? Yeah. Because I remember yeah. that happening. I'm going, you saved me. And then you go like this. Oh, no, that wasn't to me. <laughs> you and like then, turn. <laughs> and then Connor gave him a hug and I was like, I'm sorry. I know. I didn't give you a safety pin. I've just got to kind of squeeze in here. I'm yeah. holding on to dear. They say never meet your idols. He was. I knew he was going to be nice. And you know what? I of, saw the video and I was blown away by how charismatic and personable he, he was. He yeah. is the nicest guy in the. And this is my phone background, which is not surprising to anybody in the yeah. slightest. Probably that's me and Matthew. Yeah. It was just, really, really funny. It was like, the I mean, be- <laughs> it, I can't think of like a better meet your idol. He. I just, I can't stop thinking about it or talking about it. It's just the best thing that's ever happened. It's the best night of my life. I hope you guys understand how much that meant to me. I hope the three-tiered celebrity crush yes. system that I so created you, helped. I hope the fan fiction helped. Do you now check that off of, are you like, okay, I've, I was I'm literally fulfilled. like, if I get hit by a bus right now <laughs> on this green carpet, completely so like carpet. so is that like when a ghost is stuck on the in-between and it's like i just i have would have un- been able to pass on at that moment you would have been on <laughs> okay. if i was a ghost i would be passing